nice one, man. That was fucking impressive, there. He had to pay 50p to bring it in, though. He had to wear his own clothes and everything. Uh, right, we're going to have a little break now, and we're going to have our final four act of the evening. But uh, I think I'd just like to say, can we just give a round of applause to all the acts so far? <laughs> okay, back in 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. We all settled? We all good? We can talk. Let's just talk for a while. Um, no, you guys are a good crowd. That shouldn't be mean. You guys are like one of the best crowds I've ever had. I had a bad crowd once. I uh, did they get a school for the blind? That's not the funny part of the joke. Yeah, I went in there and I was like, okay, guys, just before I tell this joke, I should let you know that um, horses have got like really long faces. <laughs> and so, like, I wrote a sequel to you know, like. The horse walks into the bar and stuff. It's a new thing I'm doing. I'm writing sequels to all jokes. I'm working on the chicken one at the minute. What happens when he gets across the road? <laughs> okay, so this is the sequel to the horse walking into the bar. Joke. <clears throat> it's a drama, by the way. It's not a comedy. <laughs> it's the first drama joke. Okay. The barman looked at the door. There was nobody there. He thought about the time the horse came in. It seemed a lifetime ago. <laughs> That's literally the end of the joke. <laughs> if, if you guys are interested later, we'll be holding like a, a small memorial service for the reception of that joke. <laughs> I think about death a lot, guys, so I wrote a bucket list. Are you all familiar with the concept of a bucket list? Okay, I'd like to read you my bucket list. A bucket. <laughs> Some buckets. <laughs> More buckets. <laughs> okay, then everyone, let's uh, give a nice big DMU footlightingly funny, whatever it's called. Welcome to Mr. Curtis Young, everybody. <laughs> It has been a long flight now. No. <laughs> I should probably address the obvious. Yes, I have had a haircut, yes, yes. <laughs> um, no, if you can't tell, I'm having a bit of a crisis of identity. I have no idea where I'm from. Uh, kids at school used to say to me, Curtis, you don't look black, but you don't look white. What's going on? <laughs> and I didn't take much notice until I got to university. And one day I went into the kitchen, and my three flatmates said to me, Curtis, where are you from? I said, I'm from Hull. They said, no, which country? I said, I'm from England. And the irony of this is that my three flatmates are Polish, and they were asking me for my immigration papers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people say, Curtis, are you white? What's going on? And I say, I don't know. Uh, for all I can tell, I was conceived on the back of a Mediterranean man's milk float. <laughs> uh, who knows? Uh, and uh, the truth is, on my passport, under ethnicity, there's just a row of question marks. Um, and people say, like, I don't, well, uh, but when people say it, I really don't mind. And uh, it's more like, you know, the internet's got quite clever and you get personalised adverts. I logged onto Facebook one day and there was an advert for a dating website called www.singlemuslim.com. <laughs> no, I do not look single. <laughs> but the internet is, you know, quite clever. Um, and I do online banking, and that comes with its own set of problems, like you're always you know, wear, wear, uh, wary of scammers. And I got a call from the bank saying, you know, uh, a scam artist had tried to breach your account. And it's not so much the fact she tried to get into my account that annoys me, it's the fact that she called him a scam artist. I don't like the idea that he's an artist. You know, I don't think he deserves that term. Uh, da Vinci, fine. Uh, Picasso, fine. Kwame Loco, not fine. 
but he did send me an apology and sent me something in the post. <laughs> Not what I wanted, but you know. Uh, it might come in fashion soon, who knows. Uh, you know, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's the customer service people do really annoy me. And they always ask you for a secret word before you can go anywhere, like, oh, you, you know, before we let you into your account, we need to know your secret word. And I could never remember it. So I was guessing, I said, like, oh, is it Tigers? That's the nickname of the football team I support. He said, no, but you're close. I thought, all oh, right. I said, right, is it Rory? Because the mascot's called Rory and he's a tiger. I thought it might be related. He said, no, again, very close, though. I said, right. Uh, is it Hull City? That is the team I support. He said, no, again, very close. And we got through all this pro uh, security procedure and I finally got into my account. I said, just out of interest, what was my secret word? And he said, the word we were looking for was Jaffa Cakes. <laughs> I said, how the fuck is that close to Tigers, Rory and Hull City? He said, well, sir, am I right in thinking that Hull City play in black and orange? <laughs> like a Jaffa cake. <laughs> I said, if we're being picky, it's black and amber. But I, I fucked him off. I, I, I put the phone down. I said, I'm not having any of that. But I'll go in branch. In branch, they're much more helpful. But you do come away with a lot of literature. And, you know, that's fine. I'm not really bothered about that. But when they're writing things like this on the back of it, let me read you this. Please contact any Lloyd's TSB branch if you require this brochure in Braille. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a problem there, isn't they? Because <laughs> blind people can't read it, can they? Uh, so moving from uh, one set of wankers to another, uh, Catholics, um, <laughs> the... Um, I think Catholics can sometimes be a bit like vegetarians. The vegetarians that are like, hey, I'm a vegetarian, but I eat fish. And you're like, well, that's not really a vegetarian, then, is it? And the Catholics do a similar thing in the sense they're like, hey, I'm abstinent till marriage. It quickly emerges that they are raging whores. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, these are the type of girls that when they go to the beach, they just take a spade. Bucket fannies, yeah, that's right. Um, and these are also the type of women that will... Uh, Marry alpha males. I, don't, I think alpha males are like the f weirdest thing ever. Like, I think it's just like overcompensation because alpha males will get like a, a baby scan through and they'll be like, huh, looks like he's uh, taking after his dad in the old trouser department. And like, what a tiny, tiny undeveloped penis with testicles yet to descend from his stomach. <laughs> Not so much a brag, really, is it? Uh, and then they say, you know, they'll be in the pub or something like, oh, I've got a third leg. I've got a third leg. Your cock's got a knee. <laughs> it's got a hinge. <laughs> with a foot at the end of it. <laughs> Wait a minute. How, how do you have sex? Do you kick her? <laughs> do you kick her in the fanny? <laughs> Is that what you do? Is that what you do? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> uh, no... Going back to the uh, old religion stuff, uh, people say, like, uh, well, I don't think Jesus would have been an alpha male because you can't imagine, like, Judas and all the crew down the, uh, like down the pub just, like, downing a few bottles of uh, wine, which later becomes Jesus' blood, a bit weird. Um, you can't imagine them all down the pub and Jesus comes in like, all right, guys, uh, on the lash, are we? Uh, no, they, Jesus would never do that. Jesus goes and goes, anybody want to hear a parable? Fuck off, Jesus, it's a Saturday. And uh, I actually went on Jesus' Wikipedia page, and uh, he has got one. And uh, <laughs> it said, to our best estimations, we think Jesus could have been born as early as the year 3 BC. Well, he won't, was he? It's a year zero. That's where before Christ... What a fucking dick. Right, and... <laughs> That's like the worst research ever. Yeah, I think he was born uh, three years before Christ. No, he won't. And it, I read, read further on, and it said about uh, the churches in England used to claim to have bits of Jesus to try and get people to come. Like, oh, we've got the bones of Jesus. Uh, so they might say, oh, we've got an arm of Jesus, and people would go and think it was holy and all that crap. And uh, where this become unstuck because 11 churches claimed to have the leg of Jesus. And instead of doing what we've all just done and gone, Pretty bullshit, that. Uh, Christians went, fuck me, Jesus had 11 legs. 
he really is the Son of God. How do you think he walked on water? <laughs> Fucking hell, a speedster. What an absolute speedster. Um, and people say, Curtis, if you're, doing if you're doing religious material, don't do the, the, the stereotypical thing of, of you know, the priest touching the kids. Well, <laughs> I'm going to. Um, and that's only because I've conducted research myself. I thought, let's not take the word of the news and all that crap. Let's do it myself. So I went to a Catholic church. I asked 20 choir boys, have you ever been touched inappropriately? Ten of them said no. The other ten couldn't answer. They'd lost the voices. Um, they had hairpiece of the throat. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to read into that. I'm not going to read into that. Uh, but I do find it a bit strange when the Catholic church, and well, not just the Catholic church, just churches in general, they're like really um, sort of homophobic and stuff, and then the old priest with the little boy thing. Even gay people go, it's pretty gay, pretty gay, that. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it, I think it yeah, really annoys me when people say that morals are derived from religion. Like, without religion, we just wouldn't have morals. Do they really think that before this God or Jesus, whatever, came down, people were just going around stabbing, like, fucking hell, I love stabbing. It, <laughs> what's a moral? Nobody knows. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> and then God comes down. God comes down, and they're like, oh, just uh, doing a bit of a stab. Like, Whoa, not allowed to do that. <laughs> what do you mean? It's one of my commandments. If you don't follow, then you're off to hell. <laughs> oh, shit, I have been killing fucking loads of people. <laughs> Literally, they call me, they call me uh, Jerusalem Ripper. <laughs> uh, do you think there's any other commandments I can abide by and maybe get into heaven? Uh, uh, thou shall not commit adultery. My nickname is Tiger Woods. <laughs> them dead bodies, fucked them all before I killed them. Uh, Are there any other commandments I can, I can do? Well, uh, thou shalt not envy thy neighbour. Barry's got a fucking iPad. Why do you think I'm killing him? <laughs> well, all right, then there's, you know, there's, there's one more. You can, thou shalt not steal. I'm nicking his iPad. I'm not killing him because he's got one, you fucking dick. Um, <laughs> but, you know... I find it really scary uh, when, when, when people say, like, you know, um, God can read your thoughts. Because, like, I'd be fucked. Like, <laughs> I'd be in hell. And I'm not talking in the space of, like, uh, my life. I've done a few things wrong. I'm talking, like, in the space of this gig. I mean, you do not want to know what I've been thinking in the space of this gig. Wouldn't it be good if, in life, you got one free rip. And this applies to everybody though. This applies to everyone. So don't judge me. So on the one hand you could have sex with somebody really, really fit. And on the other hand, you could be ripped by someone like Susan Boyle. <laughs> Look at her in the front row. I would love to just take her titties out of her top and play them like bongos. <laughs> the bongos reference is nothing to do with my heritage. <laughs> What's that, Bryn? How would I have sex with her? Well, that is easy. Because I would kick her. I would <laughs> kick her in the fan. Cheers, guys. <laughs>